In this video, I'm going to be talking about a couple of things. Uh, first is my gantry crane. I've got a lot of requests for, you know, a better look at that, and I'll talk about it. And what I think of it overall, I'll show some of the details. But if you want all the details on how I built it, there's an article on my website that I wrote when I built it. Um, quite a long time ago. It originally came about because I watched a video by Nick Ferry and he talked about doing it. Uh, I don't know if he's he's actually gotten around to doing it yet, but his idea was to set this kind of thing up on rails up on the ceiling. Of course, here in my shop, I can't put anything on my ceiling because it's suspended. So I had to mount it on the walls here on tracks. It is mounted from the wall on these long tracks that are just made from plywood and screwed up on the wall. I've got a bracket down on this end, uh, mainly for support uh, at the ends because it tends to sag with the weight down there. But in the middle here, it'll be fully supported, doesn't need any brackets. Now the gantry itself that goes across is a wooden I-beam type construction that's made mainly from plywood again. Uh, you can see the top cord up there is solid wood and that's spruce as the lower cord is a strip of plywood. Now I made it this way so that it would support the camera thing here fully without any problems and also be as lightweight as I could possibly make it. If I had my time back to do this again I think that I would have changed the construction to uh, something more box shaped so that it would resist twisting a little bit better. Right now if you push on this it you know it moves quite a bit. Not to the point where it really causes that much of a problem. All I need to do is wait until it stops moving before I press record on the camera. Here's a better look at the end of the gantry where it rolls on the track. I used these plywood brackets and they have uh, rollerblade wheels up on top and behind. You can't see them here. But there's a website article that shows all of this detail, you know, good pictures and whatnot. I recommend going there and checking that out. I had a little bit of a problem with this in the beginning to get it to track properly, mainly because the walls here in my shop are not completely parallel. They kind of swell out in the middle on both sides and also one end is a little bit longer than the other. So here it is with a camera already mounted on it. This thing here hangs down from that and that's on a track that slides side to side. I've got right now I've got a battery up here that powers this light and I've got a charger over there plugged in so when I'm done at the end of the day I just plug the battery in that charges it up ready for the next day. So I got my light ready to use. I'm not going to lie to you, this thing is a kind of a blessing and a curse because on one hand it's very convenient. As you can see, I can position this pretty much anywhere in the shop, but it does have drawbacks. First of all, it's bulky and it's kind of always there and, and I've walked into it more than once, especially the light up here, I've banged into it. Also, when I swing it around, the cam, the uh, microphone booms out like that, and I've hit things with the microphone and almost knocked that off, and it also blocks the light. When it's underneath the light like that, it'll block the light going down to what I'm working on, so that's another problem. And now when I take it down to the other end of the shop, you can see how smoothly it rolls back and forth. That's really smooth and it doesn't rack either. Uh, the arrangement I have with the wheels up here, even in spite of the fact that it's, you know, these tracks are not parallel, it does roll really smoothly and it doesn't rack. Not easily anyway. So it goes down to the end here. I've actually got a stop up on the track there. Have a little bang against right there. I think it actually stopped against my plywood here, which is about four feet out from that wall down there. There isn't any reason why I'd want to get in any further than that, so I didn't continue the tracks any further. You can see that this part here uh, spins around freely. This is on a kind of a wheel up there that's trapped inside that thing. 
very simple construction. This is just a piece of two by two uh, hanging everything from. You can see it's kind of pulled back this way. I added weight to the back here to counterbalance it, but there's just too much stuff on this side of it to really make that much of a difference. I'd really need a lot more weight over here. And then if you add too much weight to this thing, it tends to keep swaying after you move it. So you set up a shot and then you got to and kind of try to steady it before you can actually do what you're doing. So it slows you down. Uh, but it is more versatile than a, a tripod is. First of all, because everything is here. I've got, you know, I've got the place for the camera, so I can adjust up and down. I've got the light here to point right at the subject when I need to, point up. I mean, point down, point up. Um, the microphone is on a boom. I built this in a previous video. There'll be a link in the description. Boom can come down and it can go all the way up like that. And it extends out quite a ways so I can get the microphone close to me when I'm talking to the camera. Of course, I'm not recording with that now. I'm recording with my small camera right now. Speaking of cameras, this is the one that I use the most for um, recording videos here in the shop, also for outdoors. This, I consider this to be, in my opinion, the ideal camera for doing this kind of stuff, uh, doing, you know, workshop type videos, because it has all the features that I want. And also, if I want to go outdoors and do something, it has a built-in ND filter, so I can click that on. I won't have to worry about trying to screw on a, a ND filter or anything like that. Or forgetting to do that actually and have a bunch of uh, clips that are way overexposed type thing. Uh, this is a Sony RX uh, 10 II. It shoots in 4K. Um, it can shoot in high speed up to 960 frames per second. Although the 960 frames per second is not really very good. I shot before on 480 frames per second and that turns out pretty good. Uh, but the 240 and the 120 are perfect and that's full HD. It's not 4k But it's full, you know, 1920 by 1080. So really good camera for this uh, The only problem is I bought this in July two years ago and I used it for a year and then this little switch down here stopped working properly so I sent it in for repairs and when I sent it in for repairs, I bought one of these this is a Sony A6300 and I bought a few lenses for it. This lens in particular right here is 24 millimeter. That's the one I used on lots and lots of videos when I was using this, when this was away being repaired. This took uh, months and months and months to get repaired. So it was really, I really didn't have any other option but to buy uh, another camera either that or rent one or try to use the one that I'm using right now which doesn't have any audio input. When this camera came out uh, it wasn't even out when I pre-ordered it. I pre-ordered it because I was really hot for the specs that this camera had. It can do so many things that the other cameras that were around at the time couldn't do. So I ordered this. It was expensive for you know what I do but I figured, you know, it was worth it because I'd have a camera for forever. But then it broke and I got this one and I'm not going to continue to use this one for video unless I want to do something special. I'm going to continue using this one for video and I'm just going to use this one for pictures because it takes really good pictures. This one takes good pictures, but not as good as this one. One last thing about this camera before I stop talking about or singing its praises. It's got a zoom lens, yes, but it's a, a constant aperture zoom lens. It's 2.8, which is really good, especially for work inside the shop. You know, you're going to get a little bit of background blur, but not, you know, not a huge amount, but it's really good for outside. And the constant aperture, you don't have to adjust your exposure every time you zoom in or zoom out. So another benefit in on its side or in its favor. Of course I've got another camera that I use fairly often uh, and that's the one that's filming this right now. It's an RX100 Mark III I think it is 
and I use that for the point of view shots, uh, especially the furious point of view thing. And I made a video about that, how I make those. If you want to go check that out, there's a link in the description for that as well. What motivated me to make this video was that I kept getting comments or questions asking what that thing is up there above my head, you know, the gantry. I didn't want to know details on that. Like I say, the best detail is in the, the build article on the website. Also, I get comments every once in a while asking, you know, the cameras that I use. Those are the cameras that I use. Those are the cameras that I'll continue to use for the foreseeable future. I don't see myself changing, uh, especially with the RX-10 II. Like I say, it does everything that I want it to do. And if I need to do anything special, I can do it with the other one with different lenses. I've got the lenses too. Um, video editing I use, I used to use, I did the video similar to this a few years ago actually and at the time and up until actually three or four months ago I was using PowerDirector. Um, I started out with PowerDirector 8 I think and I worked my way right up to number 13 and you know what it was like? It was like climbing from one turd heap to the other because PowerDirector is not a very good program for doing that. It's too, it's got too many quirks, too many problems with it. Um, like I say, four months ago, I started using um, DaVinci Resolve instead. And it's been day and night. Uh, it's like, it's completely different. It's so much better. It's almost like a joy to go and edit a video now. Uh, or pleasure anyway to go and you know do the editing when I used to really dread it with the other thing because you get so far in and bang something would happen or something would lock up or something would get reversed and I would get so frustrated but none of that happens with DaVinci Resolve and then like the real good part of it is is that you know for that stability it's absolutely free so I didn't even have to buy it so all that money down the drain over the past what five six years although I have to say that Resolve didn't improve their editing part until just recently they had really good color grading part on it like from the beginning but they recently upgraded the editing part to make it more professional and it really does a great job so anyway, I hope that satisfies your uh, curiosity about the, the gantry crane. If I have my time back to do it again, I'm pretty sure that I would do it again. The only thing I would do differently is I would make it a little bit better. Because when you're doing something like this and you've got no model to go by, uh, you don't know what problems you're going to run into. You don't want to spend like four or five days building something that you're eventually going to have to tear down and throw on the burn pile to get rid of. So, you know, that kept me from putting some, like, a bit more effort into some parts of it. Like the tracks up there, they work, but they could be better. The gantry part here, the beam that goes across, it's good, but it could be better. It could be stronger, especially where it resists twists. The part that everything hangs from is good but it could be better and I think I'm going to upgrade that eventually but you know the problem is uh, it works so when it works there's not really any point in changing it you know or no motivation to change it not right now anyway